Welcome back to Live with Kat and Dawn. As promised, we're back with you to help you learn how to make the third part of your life the best part of your life. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are watching us from. Um, it's really good to be back. Today, as promised, we are going to be delivering some actual value with tips and tools on how you can have more vitality, more mental confidence, and more physical health so that as you go into the third age of your life, you're able to do that with purpose, with clarity, with tips and tools from us, and with some physical wellness. And some vitality. So let's talk about vitality. Vitality, very few people, we hardly ever talk about vitality, but it's the fuel that keeps your body and mind running smoothly. It's not just about feeling energetic. It's kind of the measure of your overall health. And uh, so we're going to dive into why it's crucial to maintain vitality and how you can regain it if you feel like you've lost it. Definitely. We are going to give you some ideas to ponder. And as mentioned, some actual takeaways, and we will call them takeaways, <laughs> or to make it pretty clear so that you have a little bit of um, happy homework that isn't anything too daunting or too big of tasks that you, you can incorporate into your daily life. And we are going to start with Kat. What is the first tip that you think we, we're either lacking or we need to know more about? Hydration. It's key. And everybody, you know, we think we drink enough money, uh, enough money. We think we drink enough water. But it, uh, if we would double what we're drinking, we might be drinking enough. But there's ways you can, you know, take care of this. Like you can drink throughout the day. Like, like Don and I, we always have our, our cup of water by us. And you need to try to eat more fruits and vegetables because those are foods that contain a lot of water. And also avoid excessive caffeine, cat and alcohol. They both dehydrate you. <laughs> so right. the National Council on Aging suggests that women over 50 get at least nine cups of fluid per day. Now that can come in your fruit and you know whatever you're drinking. Of course, sugared soft drinks aren't great either. Water is great. Right. And one of the ways to uh, really encourage yourself to drink more water is to flavor it. Like cucumbers are great, lemon slices are great. I love ginger in my water, especially if I'm drinking warm water, I like ginger in it. You can actually, warm water with ginger is actually really good for digestion. And a lot of cultures start every morning with a glass of room temperature or warm water with some fresh ground ginger and some lemon to aid their digestive system from kind of being asleep at night. Yummy. I think that sounds great. Well, and these days you could even track your water intake on your phone, on your smartphone or you could challenge a friend or a family member to a drinking contest water that is <laughs> right. and, uh, and take it wherever you go like always have a to-go bottle oh and there's no shortage these days of the to-go bottles whether you want a 20 ouncer you know i drive a mini cooper so i bought a re i recently bought a new water bottle i realized it has to be 21 ounces most of them are 24 but this is 21 it fits perfectly in my little cup holder and 21 ounces is a lot so if they say, like you said, nine cups of water a day or half of your body weight in ounces of water daily. So, you know, I figure I need three to four of those a day and I'm always way over, but I'm active and, you know, I just, it's just a habit. It's creating a habit. Well, you know, I, also vanity, your wrinkles will show more yeah. if you're dehydrated. Like if you've got these little lines above your lip, you can probably you know, no, you need to drink more water. That's right. sort of indicates. there's another thing they call it the pinch test. If you take your hand on your skin and pinch it, <gasps> if it snaps back immediately, that means you're hydrated. If it stays tripled up and takes a while to kind of go back to spread out, you are dehydrated. So lots of different ways of knowing and waiting till you're thirsty is not one of them. No, yeah. that means you're already dehydrated. hundred percent, hundred percent. My husband is a retired firefighter medic, firefighter medic. And he said for nearly every person over 50, the first thing they do when they get them in an ambulance is start an IV of fluids 
because most people are dehydrated. And, you know, we could go on with that just alone for, uh, you know, headaches, chronic muscle pain, um, mm -hmm. any kind of cramping, any kind of sleep, you know, at night when you cramp. A lot of people talk about waking up with calf cramps. So many of those things are uh, fatigue, brain fog. I mean, so many things are equated to uh, that, which mm -hmm. will lead me to the next thing that I think that we have to really talk about and to make a plan of and have a better habits is our sleep quality. It isn't necessarily just getting more hours of sleep, it's quality sleep. So they say seven to eight hours is a good amount of time for most people. Of course, there's those few people that can function on six hours and maybe some that need nine or 10, but, but if you stay around the average of seven, it doesn't mean just counting that you went to bed and you woke up and you had seven hours of sleep, it's quality sleep. So you wanna start out with a dark room. So your, your body goes into the deep REM sleep when you are in a dark room. They actually talk about the best body temperature or the best temperature of the room rather should be between 65 and 68 degrees. A lot of people think that's too chilly. Well, you can put a blanket on, you can put a pair of socks on, but your body temperature dropping down a little is actually very restorative. So I opt for the best sheets you could ever buy. If you wanna feel like you're at a top hotel, bamboo organic cotton sheets, I mean, of course, you can buy them for outrageous amounts online, but I have found those some of those uh, stores like TJ Maxx and that every once in a while have bamboo organic cotton sheets. You've never felt anything silkier. Great for your skin. Feels good. They stay somewhat cool. You know, a lot of women wake up and they're sweaty or they wake up and they're freezing. You know, I have a thyroid thing, so my body temperature is fine, but my hands and feet are freezing. All these things that disrupt our sleep quality, which changes our hormonal balance, which changes our ability to hold or store weight. If they, um, other studies talk about the people that don't get enough sleep are more apt to be obese or overweight or snack more often because their body produces hunger hormones. So all these reasons that sleep is imperative. So the takeaway for getting better sleep is set your bedroom up to be like a perfect sleep sanctuary, not your office, not the place you watch TV. Sure, you might read a book or do a couple stretches, but calm your body in about 45 minutes, turn off those tech devices before bedtime. So Kat, now we're gonna get into stress management. Stress management. We're all stressed out, aren't we? Um, but we need to remember to take regular breaks to relax and unwind and practice some relaxation techniques like petting your dog or taking a walk or yoga or face yoga <laughs> and uh, meditation, of course, and deep breathing exercises. Now, we have to remember with the internet and all these things and people have their TV on all day, you need to take breaks from watching news uh, or listening to news or looking at it on social media. Oh it just, gosh, you get too much of that. And, you know, I love to do breathing techniques. And one of my favorite breathing techniques is the four in and the six out. And I'm going to do it for you right now. So we're going to have to sit up straight, shoulders back and down, heart open and up to the sky. And I like to close my eyes and you can keep your eyes open or closed, but we're going to breathe in for the four, pause and breathe out for the six. And you can do that whenever you need to. You just need to do it a couple of times and go back to your regular breathing pattern. And that definitely takes you out of the fight or flight mode, which we spend too much time in. A hundred percent. As a matter of fact, this morning, I literally had, had to do a 10 minute decompress you know, everything that could go wrong went wrong. And I went momentarily into stress mode. And I'm like, standing here being stressed and angry doesn't change anything, but I need to first calm my mind down. So I did, I'm, I'm, I have like a Fitbit HR and there's a little thing that you, it only goes for two minutes and it literally is that breathe in, hold, exhale. And it, it just calmed me enough to get to the gym to do a workout. Nice. Which, <laughs> which really brings me to, <laughs> which brings me to my key of the next thing is 
we are nowhere near as physically active as we used to be. And the problem with aging is our posture, our loss of muscle as we age. I think it's after the age of 30, we lose and 30. So we're all well over 30, right? So after the age of 30, if you are not on purpose rebuilding muscle tissue, you are losing muscle tissue. Now add in calorie cutting, you're losing more muscle. Add in cardio only exercise or only walking or only running or treadmills or cycling. Those are great additions to strength training, but all those things are muscle depleting. So again, the body already loses muscle as we age. That is where is responsible for our functional strength. We lack so much functional strength as we age because we don't have a strong core. Our backs are weak. Our glutes are weak. So if you want to talk about the strongest muscle on your body should be your glutes. First of all, no one wants a pancake butt, right? But secondly, I mean, if you think of how the progression of the body and looking at phones and on our laptops and everything, we're already slightly forward. Our heads are in front of our shoulders. Our shoulders are in front of our hips. We're already pitched forward. It's no mystery to me when someone catches their foot on a curb and they're already hunched over why they fall so easily. But if your posterior chain, your back muscles, your rear end, the back of your legs are strong because you're doing strength training moves, then you are going to not only have better posture, you're going to have a better awareness of your surroundings and be stronger. You're going to have much more confidence. And if you take it to the next level by building new muscle tissue, which is capable at any age, you have a body that is prepared for aging. So the key takeaway is, of course, getting outside and, and doing yoga and all those things are absolutely fantastic. Don't ever stop doing those. But add in, at the very least, two times a week, exercises that cause your muscles to contract and are a bit challenging. So two times a week, whether it be resistance bands, body weight exercises that work squats, that, that work your legs, your glutes, your back, um, things that mimic functional strength. And what is functional strength? Functional strength is the ability to bend or squat or push or pull, lift or twist your own body, first of all, or possibly an object, maybe your grandchild, maybe a gallon of milk, maybe a case of water. But to be able to do that mindfully as we age and not, and not always ask someone to do it for us creates a much more confident person with a stronger body for the future. That sounds awesome. That's what I want to do. I want to be strong forever. It's possible. It's possible, but it's but it's like but it's like that investment that people talk about their retirement program and how much money they have saved. And I'm like, I make a not so funny joke that if you aren't planning on keeping your muscle and preventing its loss and having you know really stellar upright posture, then you're going to afford a really good nursing home and use your money towards that, which who wants to think of that? That is the scary thing about aging. That's terrible. No, and that's, that's a big reason why people say they don't want to live to be 100. I don't want to be in a nursing home. I don't want someone to be taking care of me. Well, then now is the day today that after listening to our tips and tools that you start incorporating little baby daily habits that become a lifestyle. Okay. <laughs> You know what? I'm going to go on now to medications and supplements. Now, medicines are great. They they're they are keeping us alive longer than our previous generations and some of them are vital. But you should never feel uncomfortable questioning your physician about, you know, what this is and is there another way of doing it? Could I change my diet or could I use holistic methods or some kind of supplement first, because, you know, too many medications will uh, create problems. Like my takeaway tip is about drug interactions that make your medications either work less or work too much or just stop working. And sometimes drug interactions trigger side effects that you're not even expecting. And then you go to the doctor and they want to give you something for it. Yeah. We've all seen this and I'm watching this happen with my mother right now, who's 87. And you are so right, Kat, about questioning your doctor. And maybe you don't really understand the questions or feel a little bit intimidated, but the, that your key takeaway is absolutely awesome. 
ask if there's another option. Ask if I can treat this with my diet or can we try this for a month if I make lifestyle changes? Don't be afraid to be a part of your own health care. You know, doctors are all about sick care and not health care and not wellness care. You have to do that on your own. Yeah, they want to treat you. They don't want right. to make you better. Right. But right. anyway, so if you're getting prescriptions from different doctors too, this is uh, this is something you need to think about. Right. Every, every one of your doctors needs to know what you're getting from each of them, or you're going to like have interactions or right. things can happen. So concerning supplements, just as the name indicates, it's made to supplement your nutrient dense diet. You know, you can't just go around starving to lose weight and pop a lot of vitamins. That right. won't make you a healthier person. Right. And there are so many things that is very overwhelming to look in the market now, because of course, I don't care if you walk into a grocery store or a health food store, aisles and aisles and aisles of seemingly the same thing. I mean, how many protein powders are there? How many weight loss pills or fat flush or colon flush or energy boosters are there? So back to what you said, Kat, treat your wellness with lifestyle practices, change your diet, drink more water, get more active, and then conventional medications could possibly be needed. But there's so many things, I don't care if you're pre-diabetic or high blood pressure, low, all these different things that are just an automatic prescription. Do you know one of the most known prescribed medications are all the things for um, heartburn? And now studies are, you know, the Prilosec, the whatever AC, I don't know what, you know, you have a little bit of heartburn, you talk to a gastroenterologist or a doctor, and he gives you a medication for heartburn. Unfortunately, what those do is they, you think you have too much acid, so they stop the production of acid. What happens then, besides studies are showing now they're linked to Alzheimer's and dementia, what oh. happens then is your body stops producing acid you're doing that on purpose by taking the medication. And now your body cannot break down and digest food. One of the simplest things I learned this years ago when I was studying sports nutrition is chew your food longer. Do you know that the, the digestive enzyme that digests protein is found in your saliva, which always makes me laugh because you see a guy eating a steak, five chews and he swallowed it and he says, I ate 80 grams of protein. I'm like, yeah, well, you're not digesting more than five grams because you had two, two chews, you know. But you know, when we had in grade school, we they the teacher made us chew our food for a really long time. Yeah, we learned about the digestion starting there in your mouth. Wow, I wish I went to your grade school because yeah. I didn't learn that until much later in life. But you know, that's the other thing you hear people that they're gassy or they're burping or they have this chronic heartburn. Um, chew your food longer. First of all, eat enjoyable food. Chew it longer. Taste it. Realize what that means. You know, just all those things that why food is first, then supplements. And hopefully if you have to medications, but you know, all those things are so valid that you said, which speaking of medications brings me to the next topic that we talked about. And that is, I think you touched on this in the beginning, but this kind of expands on that. And it's our mental wellness and our mental health. Mm -hmm. Obviously we have seen more shocking stories than ever starting super super young with mental health and mental wellness and because i have coached women for 30 years and i've done hair for 30 years you know i definitely see people are not they don't have very good coping skills i mean i think between the pandemic way before the pandemic i mean so many women take anti-anxiety medications because we don't have outlets for our stress and we don't take care of ourselves. And that goes back to whatever you need to do, whether it be, you know, yoga or meditation, face yoga, um, <laughs> things that let you take care of yourself. Of course, there are plenty of people that should reach out and get professional help. I mean, you know, you start out with a trusted friend, you start out with talking to someone or maybe even your primary care doctor or a holistic practitioner. If you feel like you can't even meditate because you're too stressed out or you have this black cloud over you all the time, no matter how happy or sad. I mean, there is a reason to be on medication for some people. I just feel like back to your thing, Kat, about everyone's being prescribed medications. And when the, when the medication doesn't change your life, but all of a sudden you have a new thing, you get a new medication. So I just feel like mentally, 
as women, we really need to prepare our brains and our bodies to be more confident and know that we do have a lot of control over things that happen. You know, we can't control what other people do, but we can control how we react to them or what we, you know, we expect out of people or ourselves. I mean, I personally, I, I'm kind of an overachiever. I'm a workaholic. <laughs> I expect a lot out of myself and it's kind of tricky to not try to expect that out of other people. I mean, God forbid everybody acted like me. That'd be just like utter chaos. And maybe I can manage it and I don't get depressed and I don't get sad. I mean, I get mad, I get sad, but I mean, it's not lingering, but I do have people in my family and very many friends that they can't get rid of that lingering sadness or that lingering stress. So, you know, my first thought as we've spoken of is try some yoga, try meditation, try calming teas, try all those things that are lifestyle changes. And then if you still feel like things aren't working and you can talk to someone, um, definitely seek professional help at that point, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Be kind, be kind to yourself, you know. <laughs> it is a rough world. It's like, you know, people talk about, uh, oh, people complain so much. My God, this is, you remember what people did 50 years ago? I go, what matters is now our relevance of where we are in our mental space now. Mm -hmm. And it is hard. It's hard for our kids. It's hard for our parents. It's hard for us. It's like, cut yourself a little bit of slack, like be kind to yourself and do something that you make yourself feel good. I don't care if it's 10 minutes or 30 minutes a day. Self-love, self-care. Yeah. No one else is going to do something for, I mean, even if you have the best relationship and someone makes you feel great, you have to take care of you, you know, and then it's nice to be taken care of by other people too. <laughs> That's an add on. Speaking of right. that, let's talk Better about relationships. relationships. <laughs> yeah. Cultivating new relationships with new friends, old friends, family is so important. You know, it, it will, if you spend quality time with loved ones and focus on building self love and self compassion, that will, Oh, make your life so much kind of softer and easier. And a lack of relationships is very bad for you physically. It impacts your health, your cognitive health, and it will shorten your life. And this is a proven thing that people who are all alone just will die sooner. When they talk about the, I mean, the studies, if you read, which was funny because during my experience with COVID, my biggest fear was hardly at all getting COVID because I felt like I spent my whole life trying to boost my immune system. So I didn't personally, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but that was not a fear of mine. The fear was though, of all the people that lived alone that were isolated and how detrimental, like you said, that is to totally. mental and physical health and aging. I mean, that was, it still is sad, but you know, so, the, you know, what you're saying, Kat, is absolutely imperative you know but there is a way you can work on that and my takeaway tip is that you have to be intentional about it you can't be a little weenie you <laughs> have you have to be intentional about forming and strengthening relationships like you can do things you need to make the effort though and you can join a, you can join a meetup group meetup is everywhere for everything uh, join a meetup group or attend religious services or take a class. Lots of colleges let seniors sit in for free. And communities. There's so many things in communities that um, are huge. Absolutely. And then you get some kind of intergenerational interaction, which is also very good for people. And you can do the old standby. Everyone always says this. Well, you can volunteer. I know. Yeah. That is funny. I think that's what people used to do, but there's, you know, that is the beauty of the internet. You can literally, and I was just doing this for my mom who's 87 and I lost my dad about six months ago. So my mom and dad were together 71 years and mm -hmm. we're helping my mom navigate her new life. Thankfully she's healthy and she's very social, but you know, there's still that little, I want to join a group like with a friend. And I'm like, well, join something really close to home then tell someone that lives near, you know, so it's, you know, she's, she's definitely getting out there and realizing when we go online, there are so many things that you've mentioned, Kat, in addition to so many other things that things I've never heard of things that are like, wow, Tai Chi for seniors, chair yoga for seniors. Um, you know, Both those things are great too. I know. I mean, it, 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 
there's a lot of more, there's a lot more fun things that you can do that aren't just like going and joining like a book club or a knitting thing. And if you like that, cool, but more than <laughs> many options. Yeah. Yeah. But, and there's another thing, like a, a lot of people don't want to, don't want to be the one to extend the invitation. You know, sometimes your social skills get a little rusty. You're not sure of yourself and you're afraid if you ask someone, you'll make them uncomfortable or they'll say no, or they'll say yes because they feel sorry for you. It's like, don't think so much, just do it. Just, you know, extend an invitation. That person that you're doing, you're, you're extending the invitation to, you may be helping them. They may need an invitation. You are so right. The other thing that I'm going to do a little spin on that cat is how many times have you heard somebody say, I call them all the time and they never call me. The flip side of that is people say to me regularly, I was going to invite you to this, but I know you're always so busy. Um, if you're inviting me to something interesting or cool, or you're asking me, I'm probably going to want to do it. You know, that pre I predisposed idea of what you think someone else is doing or thinking or feeling, wipe that away. I think that's our takeaway for that. Wipe away those preconceived notions that someone doesn't want to hang out with you. They're too busy. They might not like get rid of all that just be that person that keeps trying to make that relationship happen and i guarantee you're gonna win out of it whether you meet somebody new or whether you rekindle an old relationship absolutely and if somebody does invite you i i know that depending upon my mood my first go-to is like oh no i'm sorry i can't you know <laughs> and then but you need to kind of take a breath let it out and say, yes, I'd love to, I would love to. So set boundaries though. I mean, if when you're getting to know people, set boundaries your own and and watch them and respect their boundaries that they set. Right. And you need to talk, but you have to listen too. So, I mean, if people, you know, you know people who just talk and talk and talk and you're like, go. you see them somewhere and you go, oh, dang it, I don't want to go over there. She's going to talk <laughs> my ear off. You know, that's a lot of conversation. So right. that's like, we need to set boundaries. We need to respect others. We need to let other people talk. We'll need to let go of control and just kind of chill out and uh, enjoy it. It's kind of like chill out and open up at the same time. Put yourself out there. Be a little more risky. You know, there's that thing of getting older that people are afraid to try new things. My parents, the coolest thing about my parents was most of the people that they hung out with were 20 years younger than them because they were so much more adventurous. Be, don't be afraid. Hey, you know what? You sign up for a, a chair yoga class and you go there and you go three times and don't like it. Don't go back. You join a book club and don't get along. What, I mean, whatever, but, but, Try new things, try things, go to a concert, go watch a dance recital, buy a ticket to a theater that you've never gone to. I used to say, I don't like plays. Well, guess what? Now I'm starting to know I like certain kinds of plays or plays that have music in them. And my husband loves them. So we're finding that middle ground. You know, it's just so many things that you think in the beginning you're not going to like, but you don't really give it a chance. Absolutely. And, and taste changes, changes as you get older. You know? And don't be afraid to do something yourself. Lots of women, especially, you know, won't go someplace by themselves. Right, right. A little scary. We have covered a lot of cool stuff today, Kat. And I want to wrap up today with, of course, thanking everybody that's here today, trusting us on our second live with Kat and Dawn, certainly not our last. We're going to continue to do this, um, possibly weekly, um, possibly every other week, but we are going to try to continue to add a lot of value and hopefully give you what you need and some things that you weren't even sure that you needed, but now you can take action on. So we're going to leave links at the bottom that have ways to contact us, ways to, um, we both have newsletters that you can follow. If you give me your email address on my constantenergyfitness.com blog, I'm giving you a free report that you can actually use with smoothies and recipes and stuff like that. Um, Kat has the yoga channel, um, Third Age Mojo, and the face yoga. Age, face yoga, yeah. Face yoga. We've got all kinds of good things that you can follow. So be and sure to follow us. Communication needs to be two ways. Like if they want, if, if anybody has any questions or if they want to talk about something that we haven't talked about, 
put that in there. We love to get your comments. Right. We have a pretty good solid idea of what we're going to be talking about as time goes on. And uh, we definitely have a lot of experience of not even counting our ages just based on the different avenues we've taken in life and continue to take. So be sure to like us, share us with friends or women or girlfriends or sisters and um, comment. I mean, as Kat said, we're happy to make you happy. So we will see you next time. We're probably going to do a deeper dive into some more tips and tools of how to make your third age your best age. So I'm going to say goodbye for now. And thanks, Kat, for joining me today. This has been super fun. Always, always learn something myself from you. I always learn from you. It's, it's great. That's why we interact. <laughs> All righty. It is. It is. So obviously the social media is our friend. So lots of ways to connect with us. And we will see you the next time with live with Cat and Dawn. See you next time. All right. Bye. Bye.